Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about linked list classes. And a linked list is just another collection, just like the array list that you saw in the previous tutorial. And if you haven't seen any of those other tutorials, you should definitely check them out. And what I'm going to do here is just import some libraries I need. You've seen the arrays library in the past. It just provides me access to all those wonderful methods that are available in that wonderful class. And then I'm also going to bring in the linked list library, which is going to be needed if we're going to be playing around with linked lists. And of course, make sure you got that dot inside of there. And then this class or this program is going to be called public class. I'm going to call it Java lesson 12. And then public static void main. And I'm sure you know what all those things mean. So now we can come in and start working with linked lists. Now a linked list in comparison to array list is particularly suited whenever you need a collection in which you plan on adding and deleting different objects from a lot because a linked list is very, very good at that. However, it's not particularly suited whenever you want to be providing access to information in a collection using indexes like we would do with an array list. Not that it can't do it, it just can't do it quite as efficiently. So it's up to you to decide how you want to do it. And I'm not going to get into the intricacies of why a linked list is quicker than an array list for doing adding and deletion. It's based off of how the information's organized. And a linked list just doesn't really organize things in the way that an array list does, which is synchronous. Synchronously. So if you want to create a new linked list, you just type in linked list, and then we'll call this linked list one, and then you follow that up with new, just like you created all of your other different objects, right, like that. And now linked list one's going to have access to all the methods in the linked list class, which is going to be very, very useful because there's a whole bunch of them. And just like with array lists, if you want to restrict yourself from being able to receive certain types of information, so let's say we only want to be able to receive strings inside of this, well, you're going to label it exactly like you did previously with array list by putting those brackets in there and string or whatever other data type you'd want to use. And then you just type in linked list and then string and then don't forget your little brackets because this is calling the constructor file for the linked list. So there we are. We just created two linked lists, one that is not restricted and the other one it is restricted in regards to the data that it will allow. Now if you want to add things to it, you just call the add method and let's say I go Ahmed Banani. And there you are, you just added that name to the linked list. And you could also come in here and call add again, of course, Ali Saeed. There you are. Now you just added those two names to the guy. And with a linked list, you can still use the enhanced for loop, of course. So let's just go in here and go string, and then we'll go name, and then names, which is the array. And then we're just going to go system out print line and then type name inside of there. And you can see here if I execute that exactly what's going on. And yes, what it did is just put out those two names that I've already added to it. Pretty simple. But there are a bunch of different types of methods inside of this. So let's say that you want to add a name and you want it to be the last name in your list. Just type in again names, which is your linked list, and then type in add last. And then let's say you want to type in Nathan Martin. And these names are all random, just made up. So that will put it at the end of your linked list. And you can see right there it did it. And if you wanted to add another object, but you wanted it to be the first in your list, well, you could type in Joshua Smith, for example. And you can see that it threw Joshua Smith in here in the very, very first position. There's tons of methods like this. Let me scroll it up here. You can also define the position that you want to place the object. And we're, in this situation, we're going to use the add method again, except we're going to type in zero for an index position. You still refer to everything as indexes. And let's say you want to put Noah Peters inside of there. No problem. Now Noah Peters is in the zero index position. You can also replace a value inside of an index with another method. And this one's called set. So let's say in the two index position, I want to put in Paul Newman. That is how I would do it. And there's Paul Newman. And this is zero index one, two, three, four, just like with any of these other types of lists or collections that we've seen. Everything's a zero index. And you can remove items using the remove function. And there's a couple different ways. Like let's say you wanted to remove the four index. And if you wanted to remove something based off of the actual value, well, this is how you would do both of those. So let's just type in Joshua Smith and make sure you put a value in there. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. And you could see whenever I run this that Nathan Martin's going to disappear as well as Joshua Smith. And that's exactly what happened. So there's the remove function. Another way you can retrieve values is you can use system out, print line, and let's throw a new line inside of here so everything's divided up nice. And let's say we want to get the first index value like that. 
And then you just go names, get, and the index that you want to be retrieved. And there it is, first index is Noah Peters, and there is the first index. So this is a little bit easier to understand. I'm actually gonna get rid of that and jump down here past our enhanced for loop. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of these guys. Do a lot of copying and paste in here, paste that in there. And let's say you wanted to get the last index. You just replace get with get last. However, make sure you get rid of that index value in there. And there it comes up. And then if you'd want to create a new linked list and give it all the values that another linked list already has, that's quite simple. Just make sure that you define it in exactly the same way. So let's say I want to copy the name linked list. Go new, linked list string. See, everything's defined exactly the same way, except in the constructor, you're going to type in names, which is the linked list that we want to copy. And then let's say you want to print that out just to make sure that everything showed up right. Well, let's just go name, copy, right like that. And you can just type in name, copy. And it's going to automatically print that out for you. However, with the weird brackets like the array list does, as you see right there. See, printed out everything so you know everything copied itself real nice. Exactly the way we want. You could also do an if statement and go names contains and see if the names linked list actually contains, let's try Noah Peters, which we know it does. And in the situation where it does contain Noah Peters, you could say something like Noah's here. And make sure we put our brackets in there. Yeah, we can execute it. And you can see Noah's here pops up because Noah Peters is inside of that linked list. And that was all brought to you because of the wonderful method name contains. You could also do checks to see if linked lists actually have exactly the same values. So we can go names and we can go contains all. So in this situation, we're going to check if the names linked list has all of the values that are in name copy, which we know the answer to that's going to be positive. So let's just say something like collections the same. And of course, you know what's going to print out there because we already did that. You could also return the index for an object real simply so let's say we want to find the index for Ali right here well we'll just come in here and go Ali index at like that and then we'll just go and use the names linked list again and we're gonna go index of and then in this situation we'll type in Ali Saeed right like that just make sure that you put Ali Saeed in here because if you only put Ali for example it's not going to kick back a positive value and there it is, Ali index at two, zero, one, two, right there. You get good with these different libraries. There's a never ending supply of tools that are available to you. It's really cool. You can also check if a list would be empty or not. Let's just go list empty and we'll check if names is empty, for example. So you just type in is empty like that. And you can see list is empty. No, that comes back as false. This kicks back a Boolean value, which is either true or false. You could also get the number of items that are in one of these guys. So uh, let's say for example, uh, let's just type in how many and we'll type in size. Just like worked with the array list, that's also going to work here. And it says there's three in there and as you can see, there are indeed three in there. Another thing you can do, if you go and you try to retrieve a value, for example, and that nothing exists, it's going to throw an error. So these linked lists, they come with a method that's called peak. So let's just do look without error. And if you do a peek, what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if there is a value to retrieve, meaning is there a first element inside of this. And if not, it's just going to return null. Otherwise, if you would try to do this with get, it would return an error. So that's a goofy reason why you might want to go and use peek instead of get if you wanted to avoid errors. But of course, we've already gone over error handling in the past. You know how to do that. Another thing you can do if you wanted to actually retrieve the first value or the first index inside of this guy, and then you wanted to delete it. So let's just say remove first element. And you're going to get more into this later on whenever we start getting in more advanced things. In this situation, let's just say name, copy. Let's start messing around with our copied linked list. Come in here. You would type in poll. So that's going to take the first element. It's going to shoot it out the screen. And then it's going to delete it from the linked list. There you are. Remove first element. Noah Peters no longer exists in this guy. And if I printed it out, you would see that that definitely was true. You can also pretty much do the same thing, except you're going to retrieve, say, the last value. And that's real simple. Just type in poll last instead. And it's going to delete the last element inside of this linked list. And it's also going to print it out the screen for you so that you know what you're working with. And it says first there. And that's just because it didn't change this. Change that. And just to give me a little bit more space, I'm going to do that. 
Another thing you can do, you know, let's just go and mainly just manipulate name copy. You can push a new value onto the front of the list. Oh, let's just type in Noah Peters. And actually, I'm just going to delete these all out. If you want all this code, it's available underneath the video. It's heavily commented. And I'm going to just jump up here and get this enhanced for loop. Throw it after that. And I'm going to type in name, copy instead. And you can see that I pushed Noah Peters back onto the front of here. And since I didn't drop it from before, there's two of them in there now. So that makes it seem like a great time to run name copy pop. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually chop off the first element. See, Noah Peters is no longer there. I can also get rid of these guys. And then again, you could also come in here and create yourself an array like we did before. Save these out as an array. So let's just create an object array. Let's call it name array is equal to new. And we're going to go object again. And we're going to say uh, we're going to put four items inside of this. Wonderful new array. And then we can go new array is equal to, let's call the names linked list, call to array like we did before. What that's going to do is it's going to convert the names linked list into an array item. Now we do a system out here. And if we wanted to print this out the screen, we could do something like call the arrays library and then the to string method and call name array and print it out the screen, which is the array that we just created for me. And I have one too many brackets inside of there. No problem, got rid of it. Now we can execute it. And you can see it printed out that array right there on the screen, right underneath of it. And then the final thing, this is pretty much every single thing you can do with a linked list. If you wanted to delete every single thing that's in the linked list, you call the clear method. That's pretty much everything. You're an expert on linked lists inside of Java. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.